Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Code with Italians. Where is Sean? <laughs> <laughs> it just went away. Are you oh, no. oh, I, see him. I can see Hi, him. I can see him. Yeah, but now you know BS, man. <laughs> Let me okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. Did it help? Ah, yes. Now it works. <laughs> fantastic. Perfect. Fantastic. Hello. <laughs> We're back. It works. Barely, but it does. <laughs> so today's episode is about how to use video conferencing software. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know if we can teach anyone anything about that topic. <laughs> Carmen, that's oh. offensive. No pineapple on pizza here. No. <laughs> so I, I want to I, I want to put it out there. So if you own a conference uh, company and you want to support us and switching away from Skype, please do. I mean, we are, we have very few few constraints from a technical point of view. If we can fulfill them, we we are very happy to switch. If only we knew a company that does video conferencing. Yeah, <laughs> or chat stuff. <laughs> Anyway, nope. anyway, <laughs> no, that's, I mean, at so, least we dodged the bullet this year. I mean, that was, that was pretty, it was pretty, pretty thrilling. This is going to announce another. Focus, Ivan, focus. Sorry, focus. sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. So today we're going to be talking with Sean about text. Yes. I mean, I think this is the fourth or fifth stream about text this year so far and we're only in may so it's going well <laughs> <laughs> even is kind of mocking me because i am inviting everyone from the text team but it's not my fault i really care about this stuff <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm very happy uh, for you sebastian i'm i'm only sad that you are running out of people in the team right yeah, but so. i can run robin <laughs> Fair I'm sure if I ask uh, Halil or Alejandra in like a few months, they're going to have something else to talk about. So it's fine. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Sean, do you want to briefly introduce yourself before we let even do the even thing? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sean, and I am here to talk uh, about text, but actually I'm really talking about performance. Uh, so for the last, uh, I don't know, like four months, uh, I've been working on basically taking a, a hard look at the composed tech stuff uh, and taking uh, taking a critical eye to that and improving the performance of it. Uh, and uh, the before that, I worked on downloadable fonts for Compose. Um, and before that, I did a bunch of stuff with Emoji because Emoji is cool. And we make new Emoji every December. Uh, so please, if you have custom Emoji, update your fonts every, every time Unicode does. I mean, <laughs> emoji alone is job security. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we also love emojis. So, well, I love emojis. I, I don't want to speak for even, but I love emojis. So, pretty, uh, pretty fond, pretty fond. Yes. Mm, yeah. I, I'm also a Unicode emoji sponsor. So. There's that. <laughs> That's how much I love emoji. <laughs> you're you're yes. the example I give when everyone asks me, how do I make an emoji? And I'm like, oh, just do what Sebastiano did. <laughs> I, I wish. So the funny thing is that the Italian gesture emoji, as we call it, um, I, I had it in, I think it was last year or two years ago, I had it in my year's resolution to submit it as, a, as an emoji proposal. And then I found out that it was already submitted and it was coming out in the, uh, <laughs> what, what, I think it was emoji 13 or something. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to sponsor it then. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> they, they stole my claim to glory, but I, I kind of clawed it back. <laughs> anyway, Ivan, let's do the Ivan yes. thing and then let's go on to emoji, no, text. <laughs> very, very quickly from, from my side, I want to thank you, um, our supporters, and uh, I want to thank you, supporters that are getting up. Did you just dox <laughs> someone? <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm gonna cancel it. I'm gonna cancel it from from the the view. Um, oh Jesus! Hopefully, oh, hopefully, I I didn't I didn't 
I mean, there is a 50% that is Mark Ellison address, but I mean, who knows? Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> please don't clip it. So uh, we have the cut, cut. Yes, yeah. No, I did. I mean, my shitty connection, they won't work. It's not the CSI enhanced kind of thing. It won't work. But now with AI. Uh, we have. <laughs> huh? Now with AI. We have AI. <laughs> yeah, now we have AI, sure. Um, so our supporters can enjoy the stream on um, on Twitch as a VOD. If you subscribe to our channel with your Amazon Prime subscription is free. Just follow the link in, in the description or in the chat. En español. Hola, uh, lo siento, Mark, por el... el uh, <laughs> El, el mistake, el mistake. Um, so, buenas noches uh, a todos. E bienvenidos a, a, a Código uh, con los Italianos. Um, so, gracias por el, uh, for la ayuda. And uh, if you want to buy our stuff, uh, la camiseta. <laughs> y, si si um, quieres comprar la camiseta en uh, la... Nuestra tienda de ropa, <laughs> That's our our clothes store kind of. Uh, anyway, if you like the T-shirt, just follow the link. You can buy it from the store. You can support us with a um, coffee uh, subscription. If you pick the Bruschetta tier, you can also access our uh, post episode uh, private chat with the guest. Usually, Mark Ellison is there. Sebastian is doing the thumbnail uh, for YouTube. Uh, the clickbait thumbnail and so th thank you thank you for the support and if you're watching this on youtube remember that you can subscribe and like it helps a lot and thank you let's go are we ready good yes uh, sean so you mentioned that we're going to be talking about text performance specifically so i i think maybe one step back is why do we need to talk about text performance yeah, no. So I think that's a that's a really good question. Uh, so one thing that surprised me. So I joined the the text team on Android. So I learned a lot about text abruptly when I when I joined that team. But one thing that surprised me is just the complexity and depth of the tech stack. Uh, so it, uh, it it very much in in most UI toolkits, including Android, uh, comprises a good chunk of the code uh, as well as uh, a good chunk of the the runtime that uh, that happens for the average screen. Um, you've got to think about, especially on Android, we tend to have reasonably text-heavy screens, uh, especially when there's like recycling view involved. Uh, most things involve at least a couple elements of text. Uh, and every single bit of that text has to go through this shaping process and go through this, this line breaking process, figure out where all the characters go, actually raster it from some sort of glyph cache. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, we have to deal with the font system. We have to deal with uh, sort of developer styles, maybe multi-styled text, uh, which turns out to be uh, not every text is multi-styled, but it's relatively common to switch from like regular text to bold text and back again in the middle of a string. Uh, and so every time you do that, you have to jump between JNI uh, back up to Java and then and back down again. Uh, so there's just like a lot of a lot of stuff happens inside of print hello world uh, in in every UI toolkit. It turns out that actual first line of code that you write is one of the hardest lines of code for the UI toolkit to support. Uh, and so it's kind of like this interesting, interesting thing that happens. Um, in Compose, we're looking at performance overall. Um, and because text is such a critical part of every screen and it brings its own inherent like execution cost weight. Uh, it's something that uh, we can move the lever on total screen display time um, by moving the lever on text performance. Uh, it's also something that uh, it, it is possible to, you know, as an app developer, uh, to sit down and, and use features that are more expensive versus less expensive. And as you start getting down into like the screens where you're actually doing, you know, microsecond performance optimization, uh, it's something that might end up coming up, uh, you know, during your actual performance optimization uh, on a screen. It's it's very interesting because when you first mentioned to me that you were working on like improving the text stack performance, I had a, a moment where a light bulb came up and was like, all right, yeah, text is expensive and we use it a lot. Why did I never care, think about the fact that there is a performance implication to the way I do text, even though uh, I might be only using like, Bold, like the the usual boring stuff, like uh, only the the normal text style, but only in a few places. But there's still like computation involved, and uh, uh, 
we have talked about several of the of the parts that make up the the tech stack in the previous episodes about text but when you look at it together uh, I'm, I'm sure that there are some very interesting challenges let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> so what would it what would it be the like the main the main thing the main problem that you were uh, that you were seeing and trying to fix when uh, you started working on on the performance. How did you get to figure out that it was a problem to begin with? I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one thing that uh, that I I I. I, I get filed filed against me basically uh, on the on the compose text team is people will write these kind of like a b tests where they write the the same thing in views and same thing in compose uh, and then do uh, performance comparisons between them. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a pretty common thing for uh, larger engineering teams to do as they first start out on compose uh, and they'll basically file any deviations as like, hey, can you go take a look at this? And, uh, and, and tell me that you're passive aggressive without saying that you're passive aggressive. <laughs> so I was comparing the old thing with the new thing. <laughs> and, yes. um, and so one of the things that we saw um, specifically, there's actually this one path that we like identified really quickly uh, as uh, the view system uh, in, in the way that it was written. Um, ended up like really, really, really critically fast. Uh, and that is, uh, I have an existing display of text and I'm trying to change the string of it. Um, and so the, the view system hits this like really nice path along that, especially if you've kind of fixed the size of the view, uh, where all it's doing is just changing out the text layout and going straight down to J and I code. Uh, and the compose system kind of just started the world all over again. <laughs> Uh, and then like, and would be like, Ouch. oh, it's a new text. Everything is brand new. Let me throw everything away and start again. Um, and so we saw like, I mean, just pretty obviously, like we were seeing some pretty big performance gaps in that area. Um, and so that was what led to the inspiration of like, let's go take a look at this critically. Uh, the other thing that we did, I mean, we, when we do, you know, performance tracings of overall compose, like text would kind of pop out. Like we'd be like, hey, look at that. I can see the text composable. Uh, maybe we can make it so we can't see the text composable. Uh, and so that was kind of the, <laughs> that was kind of the, kind of the goal. <laughs> but I guess that the text stack in compose now it's mature enough that you can do performance optimizations, but uh, obviously the first version as for the overall Compose stack was aimed at uh, correctness more than performance. So that's Absolutely. why now it's more important. And uh, I don't want to say it's feature complete because it's never feature complete, <laughs> but it's complete-ish. <laughs> For sure. And I would say uh, in the early, like Compose 1.0, we would, intentionally prioritize shipping features over spending time on performance. Uh, and that was like a choice we, we regularly made as a, as a team uh, with the intention of being able to get a feature complete enough to, to ship a 1.0 version. Uh, and we're, we're changing that as a team, uh, like this year, really, where we're, uh, with the work that I did, we're now, as new features roll in, we're really evaluating the performance and designing everything with performance in mind from the beginning, uh, which slows down nice. feature velocity, but gets us performance. Yeah, something slows down, something speeds up. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's also the 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 sign that the the project changed, you know, from uh, priority and how we work um, point of view. Like, okay, now you know, make it make it make it work, and then we can make it fast in a while. And now you are like, okay, now it has to be fast enough and good enough whenever we ship. So I like that. One last thing before we get into the weeds, I would uh, I would want to ask is so we have talked before uh, how the tech stack look at a high level, uh, mm -hmm. but I think it would be important to the, to explain the difference between the views tech stack and the composed tech stack in which part they differ and at, at which level they just I guess when you go to native code it's all kind of the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, so let me let me kind of like start from from the top, like for for someone who didn't watch the last four episodes. Uh, but uh, let me let me kind of explain real quickly. Uh, so when we first started Compose, we very intentionally uh, 
did not ship a new tech stack. Uh, and, and the reason for that is it's it's 10 megabytes minimum, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, if we add emoji. Uh, and so like it really, uh, and so it's really gonna be something that's gonna actually, you know, actually hurt your APK size pretty substantially if we ship a new tech stack. Um, it's it's one of the larger uh, bits of the SCIA that we would end up shipping. Uh, also, it's kind of like we would ship SCIA uh, is, is how we would ship a tech stack. Uh, so if we do the whole tech stack, it's gonna be the whole graphics engine and we're gonna ship around two dimensional. Uh, and SCIA, SCIA is the entire graphics engine on which Android runs on, right? The exactly, native yeah, stack of that, yeah. that does the, the 2D rendering. Exactly. Uh, Chrome also uses it, so it's just kind of like our 2D rendering stack that uh, that we maintain. And flat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so we decided very, very early not to ship the entirety of that thing that figures out how to actually draw the letter E on the screen and. and Glyph caches and all that stuff. Uh, so that part is always on the platform. Um, and whatever API version you're on, you're calling into that. And one way to think about what we actually shipped with Compose from a text perspective, uh, and it's very accurate, uh, is, is a really, really big app compat library uh, that just kind of like adds even more features uh, to, to app compat. Uh, so that's that's kind of one way that I do actually think about Compose as I, as I evaluate for, uh, features is, uh, am I creating something where we're setting a baseline behavior across different API levels? Um, as we go down into the native tech stack. Um, on top of the tech stack, we have uh, the, the low level platform tech stack, which uh, we can call Minikin uh, or Skia. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have in, um, in platform, we have some classes called static layout and boring layout, uh, which subclass layout, which is different than the rectangle layout. It's the text layout. Uh, it, was a, it was a real name grab back in 2009 uh, to, to call that thing layout. We can, uh, and... we can probably blame <laughs> Roman or something. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and so that thing is basically just a, a Java class that uh, wraps the, the behaviors of the underlying C++ text stack. Um, and then Compose is basically built on top of that, that layer. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that's, I think, a, a reasonable Difference, uh, and then the difference between composables and views. Uh, I, we can go into that, but uh, they're they're pretty different things uh, in 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 a lot of ways. Yeah, uh, just to relay a message from Maya in the chat, there she's thanking for not shipping a new tech stack because that would have been a blocker for emerging market customers. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's that APK size increase is, is something we're very conscious of. I guess the other thing is by using the native text stack, you're inherently uh, rendering text in exactly the same way as the, the views, or <laughs> kind of at, at least laying out the text in the same. <laughs> I, I would say so. We're using the same engine, but we went through like a lot of effort in Compose to add new features and to mm -hmm. kind of have more fine grained control than is realistically available in the the view system APIs. Uh, so, for example, you can actually use EMs uh, and you can set mm -hmm. line heights, uh, Ooh, and those are features we that. wanted to uh, uh, we nice. wanted to work. Uh, <laughs> and so we, we we did get them to work, uh, and as a result, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of like spans and like coercing the the view system into uh being happy or not the view sorry that's the, the the text layout system into being happy with uh what we want uh <laughs> with uh with weird apis <laughs> i i can imagine that someone went in there with a blowtorch and a hammer trying to bend it <laughs> <laughs> to your will it's like no i said it's gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so I've run out of questions that I had okay. pre prepared. Um, so shall we switch to the code? Should we, do you want to show something in particular? Uh, well, I thought one thing we could start with is, uh, wait, where'd you go? Uh, okay. Is we could start with JetSnack. Um, yes. So what I really, I don't know, what I kind of wanted to talk about today is a little bit of like, uh, really more of like composed performance. Um, and then as we do that, uh, we can talk about uh, text performance. Um, mm -hmm. And then as much as we're interested in doing, I can talk a bit about uh, kind of the new tech stack uh, and how that, that works. Um, so what I've just pulled up here is JetSnack. Um, let me put this on an emulator, which we'll see if it works and launches my emulator. Uh, that way you can see it all on the same screen, right? Yes. Can I ask you to uh, increase the text yeah. font size a bit, please? Yeah, let's figure this out. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, command comma add search for editor, uh, sorry, font. 
and then uh, in editor font on the left hand side editor font there you go just put it like 20. okay yeah it's all right is that Perfect. is that visible yes to you that's great Perfect. thank you very much all right uh and this emulator has launched that's fast i'm so happy with the emulator team <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know, it's like a home.kt. It's a thing we can look at. Okie doke. All right. So, uh, so this is the, the just stack sample that DevRel puts together. Um, and it's uh, kind of, it's a lazy list here. There's some tabs down here. Uh, and we have, uh, we have kind of like a, a view up here that you can scroll. Um, but not like that. Uh, so, uh, and then this is inside of another scrolling view. So this is a nice, uh, like complex uh, example to kind of see uh, the various uh, things that you can fit together. Uh, what I want to do, like, I don't know, I thought it'd be fun to, let's take a look at this thing and see what we find. Um, I believe this is using a bill of materials from before my performance works. So we can talk about some of the things that we see. Uh, so, um, and this is also um, something that uh, would be valuable to do as an application. So the first thing I'm going to jump into, uh, because I find the existence of the profiler in Studio here uh, makes me like kind of biased to using this one, um, uh, because it's uh, it's it's just easier to use because I have the tool uh, right here in my hand. Um, we also have Perfetto, which uh, if we have some time to, we can maybe try to jump into later. Uh, but this is where I spent actually a lot of my time. Um, so I can go ahead and uh, profile this, um, and I'm going to use complete data um, because it's going to give me the data that I want. So it's not going to be sampling. What's the difference? I don't really know. Yeah. So there's currently a a rewrite of the kernel level sampling engine. Uh, it's like my this is my summary. Uh, but you should also invite Rahul on. Uh, and you mean invite back Rahul? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, and and learn more learn more about this because I'm I'm basically summarizing what I know from other people, uh, but basically there's a, a transition from uh, what we called a trace, which was uh, mm -hmm. the first uh, trace mechanism that we had on Android, um, over to Perfetto, uh, which uses a thing called Trace D, which is different because it's instead of a trace, it's Trace D, uh, and uh, all I know about that is it basically installs uh, kernel probes uh, and then mm -hmm. uh, does stuff like uh, interrupt the CPU, see what uh, see what stuff is on the stack, uh, or uh, instrument allocation stuff like that. Um, it also allows you to do kind of the SysTrace style, uh, pro uh, like I'm tracing this section um, mm -hmm. that I think uh, you know you've probably seen come out of like uh, view dot on create uh, emits a trace like this. Um, so the first thing I want to take a look at uh, with uh, with basically any performance investigation, uh, I found that like by far the biggest results that I got came from uh, recording my allocations and then uh, and then doing the thing that I was interested in to see what was going on. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and record some allocations up here. Um, and then I touched it. You can see at the top, these are my touch points right here. Uh, so I know that there's some scrolling going on in here. So let me, oops, oh no. I'm gonna make this a window. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so this is a little gear right here um, and I can take this profiler <clears throat> and I can turn it into a window. Um, and then if I take a look at this, uh, let's take a look kind of at this region right here where I was scrolling. Um, Um, we can see all of the things that were allocated. So this is actually mm, looks pretty reasonable for, for the scroll behavior. Uh, most of them are object. Uh, I'm going to guess these are probably some sort of uh, uh, Kotlin list. Um, and then we have a couple interrays. Um, so I can dig through here and find some stack traces like this. But there's actually, I think, a much better way to do this, um, which I find Ooh, uh, typically yeah yeah this <laughs> jumps right into what it is i care about um so i can actually use this visualization right here um 
And if I take a look at this, I can just look at like allocation counts, for example. So I have a ton of these small things, um, but this is actually grouping stuff by the root, right? So I can see like uh, this resume width is interesting because um, it's pretty big. So let me go ahead and expand that thing out. Um, so this resume width is actually uh, doing, um, it's allocating a link hash map in there. Uh, is there anything like kind of interesting? Uh, so this is all snapshot modification stuff, uh, which makes sense because I'm seeing here advanced global snapshot, advanced global snapshot, uh, pending invalidations. So that's the snapshot management that happens basically um, every frame when we're doing this scroll event. Um, this is looking pretty pretty slick. This actually doesn't see anything. I don't see anything in here that looks too. What's this? I see a URL fetcher. Uh, coil, invoke suspend. Huh. All right. So this is actually grabbing some stuff from the network. I did not know that. Today I learned how this application works. Is it um, maybe because the it was subcomposing the next element and then loading the image from for that? Yeah. Uh, well, I can't decide if it's uh, so from this trace right here. I don't know if it's subcomposing because this is executing on a on In a, a coroutine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know how that was, was kicked off, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. So this is going to show basically all of the allocations. Um, if we wanted to get like more, uh, pointed, like a thing that like, let's say that, uh, uh, what I'm actually interested in is the beginning of this display right here. So I have, uh, mm -hmm, on the, what is this thing called? Probably the, uh, feed I would guess. Um, so if I, if I'm interested in this feed here, um, what I kind of want to do, like, say I'm really interested in what compositions are happening, uh, when, uh, when this, or not what, comp like, what's the work that's happening to get this first screen, um, onto the, uh, onto the screen. Uh, so what I want to do for something like that, this is a, like a very common, uh, thing that I found really useful when I was like trying to make the text composable faster uh, is I want to uh, make myself some sort of val like uh, visibility equals uh, produce state um, initial value of true. And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, while true await or uh, what's the API for this next frame? This dot oh wait. No. <laughs> What's it called? Uh I wish I could help you. I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna go to the, we're gonna go to the docs now. That's where we're gonna go. Uh, uh let me actually switch out of this window. All right. Can you see my docs screen? Yes. Um oh wait, next. Next frame compose. Woohoo! Wait, maybe this this blog post right here might have uh, it's with from... frame millies. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who is this? Uh... Jorge. Oh, nice. Jorge, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so this this is in fact the API I want. So what this is going to do is uh, basically it's going to suspend the coroutine that I'm in. Uh, uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, it's going to suspend the coroutine that I'm in for this produce state right here. Uh, and then uh, time, I'm not going to use it, but it'll it'll tell me what the time millis is, which if I was doing an animation, mm. um, I could do, uh, I could use that to calculate the the um, the, the next value. Um, okay, so I have this with frame millis, so now I'm just going to go uh, this dot value equals not this dot value. Um, super exciting. Um, and then now I have this, uh, this magic uh, produce state that uh, I probably want to remember it. Um, oh wait, do I not want to remember it? Right. I know when to remember things. Um, <laughs> so now I have this. Uh, so now I have this magic produce state, and if I go into produce state, I can see that it in fact is a launched effect. So we're okay. Uh, so what I can do, and uh, I wouldn't, you know, ship this to production, but uh, you know, if I'm doing performance, uh, if visible. Uh, then I'm going to do this stuff. You probably uh, need the by instead of the equals in the declaration. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Probably. Damn, look at that. Uh, so so now I can run this. And if I do this, basically what it's going to do is it's going to make this flicker in and out every single frame, <laughs> um, which is awesome uh, for burning battery really quickly. Um, uh, it also uh, it gives me kind of this uh, ability to... Um, uh, there we go. Uh, so I don't know if you can see this on video, but it's, uh, I kind of hope you can't. It's actually, it's kind kinda... of, kind <laughs> of, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it's in fact hitting, it looks like about 30 frames per second in this emulator of, uh, of, uh, flicker. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to the, uh, profiler and stop looking at that with my eyes. Cause that actually, it's kind of like very, very, uh, stroby. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run the, uh, the profiler again. Um, and then we wait for that to settle down for just a second. Um, so I get some uh, this, uh, memory profiler again. Um, and at this point, now I have basically the initial composition happening every single frame. So if I capture this, I'm going to find out what it looks like when I add this composable to an existing composition tree. Uh, so this is actually going to be kind of instructive to where uh, where my actual allocations are going. Uh, the reason I focused on allocations here really is because one, this tool is accurate. Like th this tool, like never lies about an allocation. It either happens, it doesn't happen. Um, and by tracking my allocations this way, uh, it never really modifies the allocations of the uh, of the actual underlying code. Uh, you can see I'm testing this thing in an emulator uh, while doing performance work, uh, and that's actually okay because I'm just looking at allocations. I'm not looking at uh, any sort of actual like wall clock numbers of any kind. Um, so this is a really uh, amazing performance tool for getting um, some easy like you know 10, 100 nanosecond wins. Um, so we can see a couple things changed here. So I, I added this, and we can see this this line here. I actually don't know what this line means, but I can see it's going up and to the right. Um, and then we can see a garbage collection event right here, uh, where it then immediately drops a little bit, uh, and then we see uh, up and to the right garbage collection and so forth. So we can see we're actually churning uh, a decent amount of uh, of uh, of actual memory at this point, which is which is fantastic uh, because now we have stuff to go find. Um, so let's I like take a look. how you're <laughs> saying that's fantastic. <laughs> We've killed oh, the heap. That's that. great. <laughs> um, so we can we can jump in. Um, we can jump in pretty much anywhere here. But uh, I'm going to stop that because it actually kind of it's very very uh, very intense. But let me let me jump into. Uh, let's see what Box is doing. Um, I don't know. Just picking a random one. Um, so I have myself in here. Uh, this is like everything that has box in its call stack, right? So I'm using this this field here uh, to to jump in, um, and I'm seeing like roughly this is about what I expect to see. So I, I see that there's some stuff happening in measure, um, uh, and then there's some stuff happening. It looks like there's some compose happening, um, some observed derived state calculation. Uh, which is costing some insert groups. So that's something that uh, maybe if I were uh, digging in on this over on the, the framework side, I might go poke at that a little bit more. Uh, this measure, um, so this looks really, 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 really nice. Um, let's go check out uh, basic text. Um, uh, so same, we're seeing the, the allocations for uh, the insert group. Um, that ends up happening. This is uh, inserting the composable into the slot table. Uh, we see uh, the source marker. We see start group. Um, so this looks really good. Um, so what what exactly are we looking for? How would it look if it were bad? Would it have like a giant block? Or that's yes. Uh, so like if if like there was a basic text compose call and it was like the majority of this and. Uh, and I was seeing uh, like like a bunch of different allocations in there. That's something I would want to to go jump into. I'm okay. actually not seeing anything that's obvious. Um, so all the big things are things that are happening uh, via what appears to be what is this one? I don't know what that is. Oh, this is I see lazy item provider. Where does this end up? I saw something in Jet Snack here. Let's 
filter right. chip. Oh, what's this? Ooh, I found something fun. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, right. the enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> For things are broken, let's fix Oop. it. You know, so that if, kind of if you stuff. find something that, that can be improved and then that ends up into Compose, can we say we contributed to Compose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for wow. sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, so, wow. so we have filter wow, chip right here. Down. Low bar, man. <laughs> Low bar. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, yeah. I'm, right away, let me, let me add it to my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Jetpack Love Compose it. contributor. Love it. Jetpack Compose. I worked with the Jetpack Compose performance team on a <laughs> quick, you know, that, that's the, also the description. And then there is a recommendation there. So Sebastiano that sponsors the thing. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I mean I'm I a consultant. It. I need to do this kind of stuff, right? Because I mean I keep selling myself, right? All right. So we have ourselves oh filter chip right here. All right. Oh, this is our code, it looks like. Uh, ah. this, is, this is fantastic. All right. So this is this is uh I mean this is like kind of a roundabout way to go. I have like this this general like, hey, I want to look at the screen. Um it's typically more productive to start from. I have this filter chip, chip and I have suspicions about it, but what I'm seeing is on the first frame, we're seeing some allocations right here. It maybe they're, they're uh, necessary, uh, but this is something that uh, we're using for the background color to make a surface uh, so that we can later, when do we modify this thing? Uh, animated color is snake. What do we do with this thing? Looks like we just set it there. Oh, it literally just animates based on whether it's selected or not, which is a totally fine way to, to program this. Um, but if I if I found out that this uh, this animated color right here, so this is looking like it's having a, a reasonable number of uh, of allocations uh, just in this one spot. So this is something that if if I had reason to believe that I could actually gain, you know, maybe one two percent, um, doing something different here uh, might be able to gain me that. Uh, and I'm doing that uh, for this animation right here. Uh, so this is something I could probably do uh, an initial value and then animate it when uh, the like actually uh, uh, allocate the animation when when selected changed. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's probably something I can do where I use a cheaper filter chip. Uh, where I just take this thing and remove this animation, um, make a cheaper copy of the filter chip uh, that exists until someone actually clicks on it and then swap it in for the more expensive implementation. Uh, so if we wanted to do that, uh, what would we do? So like, yeah, so we already have the, the interaction source right here going to the offset. Um, Um, yeah, because it's interesting, uh, interesting where this goes. But yeah, I think that this is something that I would um, like is is an interesting find uh, in this uh, in this API right here. Um, I'm I don't want to dive into this because I think I'm going to have to think a bit about how the code actually is structured. The easiest thing to do would just make a cheap filter chip that does mm -hmm. less for the first frame, um, and all it does is just draw the text with a, a very simple border around it. Would, uh, would that be just to uh, to have it for the, the first frame and then replace it whenever there's a user interaction of any kind or so exactly would exactly. you capture the interaction source and see if there's anything coming through there and then when that happens you switch you switch to the other interactive implementation exactly exactly I okay. mean um, to actually get a win there you're probably gonna have to go up a level um mm. So like, it's probably not going to be right, inside yeah. a filter chip. It's probably going to be this filter chip. Uh, well, probably even the one that owns this. Uh, so the how will you do screen. that? Sorry if I, if I ask, but how will you do the cheap version and then swap it with the more expensive one? Because I'm not familiar with the, oh yeah, this is just the first frame and then I swap it, but how would you do that? Oh, uh, I mean, I, so... I understand that I can I can copy paste the composable and take away the animation and then mm -hmm. use it. But mm -hmm. then, how do I put the second one in place, like the the, the one with the animation in place? 
For sure. Uh, so I am. Uh, I'm going to do this in the composable level uh, for the first time ever. So we're going to be we're going to be uh, figuring this out together here. Uh, let's, That's how let's we try roll. To do it. We improvise. <laughs> That's <laughs> how we roll. Yeah. That's what we do. Filter, That's what yep. we do. First Hashtag frame. content. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is then going to have uh, uh, filter dot enabled. I'm just going to say this has selected. Ooh. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, well, it's just, yeah. So this is basically, let's say this thing is just like, say it could reduce entirely to text, like uh, a filter. Uh, and then we do like, uh, to, to do shape, um, uh, to, to do, how, how am I going to do that? I'm going to probably make a uh, box, modifier right? dot shape, I think. Yeah. But I think I'll have to put it outside. Yeah. Uh -huh. On a surface. Um, surface shape, surface, it's going to do shape equals. What did I do wrong? Uh, why doesn't it like my shape? Oh, because it wants a lambda. Yeah, that's like all right, perfect. Uh, it's confusing then... when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so then we have like this chip filter thing. So let's go figure out what, what do we do with the chip filter? We have filters like KT. Uh, that's um, probably preview. Yeah. Yeah. It's preview. Previews. Okay. Wait, what happened? I did something wrong. Filter chip. Go back in here. Who calls you? Uh, filter screen. Okay. Uh, what's a filter row? It's a flow row. Oh, as, a, as in flow layout. That's fancy. Ooh, that was nice. I didn't. I, we didn't see that anywhere in the uh, performance uh, on the allocations, which is nice. It's um, a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see. Do we have any event handling in here at all? No, it doesn't, doesn't look, look like, like it. it. What about up at top? Okay, so this is all. All the events are handled down in here um, on this interaction source. Uh, let's see. I think we're going to just take like roughly this, this kind of vague interaction source idea. Um, do, do, do. Um, okay. So we could do like, uh, so like, uh, do, do, do. Um, let's just go ahead and say, so we're in a filter chip section and we can do like a val, um, uh, fully initialized by remember meeple state of false. All right. So we're just, we're, we're really just trying to catch like some interaction and flip this toggle right here. Mm -hmm. Um, if fully initialized, then we're going to do that stuff. Uh, and then there's, uh, else we're going to do some cheap stuff, uh, Oh, sorry. Um, and so there's some things that I'm thinking as I'm typing this, which is like, I'm not sold on the performance gain of this if statement right here, because I'm switching from here to here. So I'm basically at first use, I'm going to be uh, initializing everything in here and swapping out a bunch of stuff in the slot table. Um, so what I'm going to be looking for to evaluate this is like, Actually, I expect that the majority of the time, uh, this doesn't happen. Um, so I never actually end up in this full initialized state. Uh, and I'm typically doing this cheaper kind of like a uh, Chrome presentation option. Um, but if almost every single time I'm doing, uh, I'm going to be doing this, um, this may not be a performance win. So this is something I'm going to have to actually evaluate in, in, in terms of uh, uh, usage patterns, because um, otherwise I can't really know uh, whether it's going to work. Um, did you just copy the channel pattern? Um, okay, so what I need to do is do, do, do. And then the other thing we're going to do down in here, we're just going to use basically the same sort of interaction source stuff. But we're going to do different stuff in it. Uh, Uh, 
So would you, this is only doing it, uh, like you're doing it at the uh, container level because whenever there is any interaction at the container level is the moment you switch everything to the yeah. like fully hydrated version? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So this is kind of like the exact same thing. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, edit texts, like in the view system, do this exact same uh, same trick, where there's some actual you know uh, thing that you can determine, like actually the user actually needs the edit text, and at that point they make the edit text, uh, and before that it's just you know a rectangle that looks like an edit text. Uh... <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so I uh, okay. So uh, given this requirement, how do I actually, uh, do, 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 how do I, I uh, get, how do I what? Interaction source, interaction store. How do I do this thing? Um, intercept events, compose. Handling user interactions. Look at the beautiful document that I have totally <laughs> read. <laughs> um, okay. I know there's a way to like get like an event stream or something out of this thing. Uh, I guess never you would done it. Do it when you have. Yeah, you get that. Like you put it in a in a launched effect or something oh, like wow. that, but. I, I do not believe we're going to get a performance win now. This this seems unlikely. Uh, I mean, you're starting <laughs> well, a core routine at this point. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think it's going to work. Uh, if I'm honest, uh, but uh, but this is the uh, the general pattern. If there's a cheaper way to do this, then uh, uh, so how do I? So I have like a. Uh, a Roman line. just posted uh, something in the chat for as a reference for interaction. Uh, sources. I'm going to send you the link on Skype. Okay. If I manage to. Yes, I did. Sweet. What do we got here? Oh, this looks pretty. I like it. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's the new post from uh, Louis, right? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Louis definitely knows uh, yeah. about interaction sources. So I'm, I'm going to trust this post. Is uh, definitely an authoritative source. <laughs> so is pressed. Uh, I'm I'm totally like scrolling and reading as we go. I'm also looking for the code sample that we're going to copy and paste. Um, so it, it seems like you mostly get one uh, from modifiers, right? Or, or do, or do you to, uh, pass it to modifier? We give it to a modifier. All right, what does hooverable do with it? That's that's where we're going next. Um, Modifier.hoverable. Uh, interaction source, great. But what do you do with it? All right, so. Uh, you. Because this is a modifier, and yes. it is a composed modifier. Um, it's defining a suspend function and another suspend function. Uh, it's defining a function, and then it's launched affecting. OK. Oh, it uses Ooh. pointer input. I okay. like this. So this this seems That still sounds easier. <laughs> What's it do though? <laughs> there we go. Uh, so, so we, we do have it's to launch the effects all the way effect. down. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a launched effect for sure, but point, pointer input strikes me as closer to what we were trying to actually yeah. say originally. So, like going down this going down this path uh, just a little bit further. Uh, do this gets called here. Um, you can hide it as much as you want. At some point, there is a core routine. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Compo compose is just only core routines. It's just like it's just a big. It's a big core routine that makes core routines. That's all composes. <laughs> Pointer input. Um, 
I don't know, let's get some keys. I don't know what the keys are. Uh, I'm totally, uh, totally exploring this as we go right now, by the way. Um, so it wants some keys. What are the keys that uh, this thing gave? Filter and then key one. What's a filter? Uh, filter is... Uh, suspending pointer input filter. I see. What is any? I'm not quite sure what a key is for this. Uh, the key for the launched effect? Uh, and now for the pointer input. Uh, Don't you just need to pass it a... Uh, oh, right. Yeah, that one. Uh, that's a good question. If only the documentation mentioned it. Yeah. Wait, uh... So input I think it's the same as launch. It is used for the launched effect at the end of the day. You can just pass a unit, I guess, if you don't need it. Yeah, I think in this case, because I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to modify the state. Uh, so I think we're fine. Um, yeah, so we can use unit here. Um, so we're fine here. Uh, and I'm just going to go over to pointer input interaction source, and then you have pointer input scope, and then await pointer event scope. This is very suspicious. Pointer event scope. Uh, what do I do in this thing? What does it do? Await pointer event scope. Uh, await input events and respond to them immediately. A call to resume the blocks as well quick completes. Okay, that was slightly less helpful than I was hoping for. Uh, this. Uh, what do we got in here? I guess current event is the one you want. Because and is the most recent touch event. So I see. So it almost seems like if if this gets called, uh, sorry, where did it go? Um, if this gets called, it's perhaps the case that we have um, uh, we have done something. So at this point, maybe we could uh, flip our uh, doo -doo -doo. this returns unit. Um, Current event. I don't know the answer to this fully. Can we just do this? Does this actually do something? Anything? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, this will make sure that it's switched to the full iterated version whenever there's any sort of pointer input, which might be like on desktop you might be having a hover mm. uh, as well which also works for us because we might have uh some sort of reaction happening to uh to a hover state for example yeah it's i'm saying desktop but then or you have a mouse uh, connected to your tablet yeah yeah for sure yeah the, the large screen use case i think that sounds that sounds okay to me because you were already past the first frame and we have user intent to use this region so it sounds like we're heading we're heading in the right direction there um so that that's that seems okay to me um uh th that's that i mean given the the complexity of, of of this machinery um i i you know now we were trying to save ourselves like a tiny little <laughs> allocation so i don't know if we've we've accomplished much uh so that's something that we're, we're, we're gonna have to go um actually check um and uh to do that we'll need to uh write ourselves a benchmark um uh so i think that uh i don't know what i'd like to do now is like let's go write a benchmark um sure that's, that's that sounds like something we want to do, do for compose. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, uh, so here's the here's the full disclaimer. I've never written a benchmark from scratch. I've only copied <laughs> and pasted Gradle files that uh, once upon a time Rahul wrote the first source of or something like that, uh, and then like they've been copied and pasted like twenty times, and that's how they all got written. Uh, that is so a perfectly perfectly valid <laughs> strategy in my book it's, it's a gonna... battle battle tested uh, grid of it, that's that's how i call it it's a battle tested copy pasted uh sorry 
uh, right, an, an Android and Macro benchmark. Um, so let's give it a try. Let's follow the the documentation and try to add ourselves uh, a benchmark to um, to JetSnack. Does that sound like a fun thing to do? That will totally be successful, and we'll actually have one at the end. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's see. What's the project structure we have in this thing? Uh, so we have JetSnack. Um, it's got an app module. It's got a bunch going on in build scripts. All right. Do, do, do. Okay, so let's give it a try. Uh, so macro require a test module separate from your app code that is responsible for running the test to measure your application. Um, actually, before we jump into this, let's uh, let's talk for a second about like what macro benchmark is. Um, so macro benchmark is. Uh, uh, it's actually, it's really useful for uh, kind of this sort of first frame uh, situation that we're interested in um, for this Compose application right here. Uh, what it does is it instruments the uh, like big, big things in your application. You can kind of think of it as like an integration test of benchmarks. Uh, so what it does is it uh, it's going to go ahead and uh, allow you to test things like time to first frame. It's going to allow you to test things like when I scroll a, a lazy list, uh, like what happens. Uh, it's pretty expensive to run in back for benchmark. Um, so these things run for like a minute or so, uh, because they run like these, these like second long things like 20 times. Um, so the, uh, the other thing with macro benchmarks is they, they can hit kind of this, this uncached, like, uh, hot path code. That's not, um, uh, it hasn't been warmed up at all. Uh, but as a consequence, basically, uh, you're just going to have like really high high jitter on you know something like actually launching the first frame of an activity. Uh, you're going to get like really high variance in in the actual numbers you get out of it. Uh, so it they're they're kind of like they're the I, I like to summarize it. They're the instrumentation tests of benchmarks. Um, there's also the micro benchmarking library, uh, which in contrast measures really short things very very well, um, but it warms everything up uh, and it, it just does a little bit of different stuff. Um, uh, so I'm going to make a new module, uh, and we're going to benchmark. Ooh, look at that. That is fancy. That is super cool. Uh, nice. and the, I, I love this thing. Uh, so we can customize the target application. So let's see, I'm going to make one called benchmark. Uh, okay. Target application. Oh, and I can choose one or the other. Maybe we'll try to do both. We'll see what see what we get to. Uh, and then I'm going to make one. What is my package name already? Com example jet snack. Com example jet snack. Yeah, probably. I know how to. Yeah, yeah, that looks right. I know how to use the IDE. I've totally used it before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, new module benchmark. Let's make a Mac com dot example dot. Jet snack. Sure. Com dot example dot. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to. No, that's not allowed. Uh, so let's do that. Let's do that. This looks good. An example startup benchmark. Whoa. This is cool. Will it will it just run? Let's let's find out. This is this is pretty cool. I'm gonna send your reaction to my colleagues that worked on this as soon as I find <laughs> out who they are. <laughs> this is this is really cool. Uh, uh oh, what did we do? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> too much Gradle. It it, it like, got too excited. Maybe maybe you need to sing. Maybe try uh, to sing. Maybe you're missing okay. something. There or not even plug okay, so in uh, com Android application. What? Okay. Okay. So uh, look at the Tomo. Hmm. No, it's gonna be yeah, in the in the Tomo file. Uh, grade all versions. Oh, anyway, yeah, lips okay, all versions. So which one? Okay. Yes, and as the it's using the AGP in. version, which should be correct, but it's saying it doesn't find it. What the fuck? 
Maybe. Can we uh, see if there is more in the error in the beginning, maybe? Uh, sure. Okay, build file line 17. So that's. Yeah, okay, plugins. That's there. The plugin line. There, 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 because the plugin is already on the. Oh, uh, maybe it's already the, applied. It, uh, yeah, it's the. You don't need an application, maybe, because this is the. Yeah. It's, Some, a, it's a library. It's a, yeah, it's a child module, so you probably don't yeah. need it. Let's find out. Okay, okay now it's also complaining about. Uh, the same for the other ones, probably. No, just don't don't do that. Okay. I'm suspicious. Now he's gonna need. Uh, well... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, so I think. We're no, but making... you need you need you, you don't need Android application, but I think you need at least Android library. If you need an Android module that builds. No, but this is going to yeah. be an application. It's fine. As, as uh, Atul is saying in the chat, it probably just needs a apply false next to it. Or, ah, okay. or you put apply false at the higher level. Wait, so what's interesting here, wait, where is this? OK, so sorry, where you do? What, uh, yeah, what do we do? At the end of the at line, the... add apply false. Uh, no, outside of the okay. outside of the parentheses. Apply false, boo. Okay. Let's see if that works. Try. I mean, if he complains about Kotlin Android, then. Uh, no, still no you obligation. need to do. Sorry, you need to do it uh, at the higher level, so at the root, probably. Use it as yeah. in fix. It looks cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't need the parentheses, but that's not gonna make the app work or not work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, oh, okay, so that the was the... so yeah. So this is interesting. This is an app. We're seeing these plugins up here, and then over in Benchmark, we're seeing yeah these plugins over here. Mm -hmm. uh, why did this break the app? Um, yeah, you so need to need put to those yeah to the root one and just next to oh those oh, already have apply this. false. You need to do the same for the other two above. Oh, uh, okay. Although you probably, do, I don't know. Are you sure? I'm very should confused this by here? this. Or should this be in the? It should be. No, that that doesn't. That's fine. Wait. Yeah, yeah that, that should be fine. fine. Apply it to the root build dot gradle. Yeah, say it in the chat. Yeah, apply. which is where we are now. So, but is there anything above it in the? Um, maybe actually, the... let me. Uh, I don't see any gradle in here, so we're in chat snack. Yeah, so it looks like that's the root. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm 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 open to suggestions. I am uh, trying to load the code on my browser so I can see what's going on a bit better. <laughs> so, this, this tiny, like, uh, three-line window is hard to debug it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so it doesn't look like that's applying the plugin in there. Uh, so in the in the root one, is not it's not applying anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there build scripts? Is this the ah uh, is this it i don't know uh no <laughs> ah the trolls the trolls in the chat i the mean trolls. sean can <laughs> <laughs> he's in the us uh but i don't know if it's gonna give you uh like a specific answer for this specific problem because it seems a bit weird oh 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 ask the ask the ai uh yeah. Uh, I mean, it'll definitely tell me stuff. Uh, I don't know if it'll make the Gradle script build, though. <laughs> Only one way to find out. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> I don't, I'm not ready. Uh, sorry, I, I don't know if, uh, uh, I don't know if I actually can load up the bard that I have access to on a stream. Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, we, we don't want to go there, okay? Because already <laughs> I have already need to uh, edit the stream for the address. <laughs> I don't want to. I edit mean, this. edit once, edit twice. Does it really make a difference? Yeah, sure. But also, put the subscribe and the like button with the ring bell. The, the full, the full fledged YouTube kind of edit. So I'm not. I'm, I'm looking at the build uh, script for uh, the app module, and that looks fine. I don't understand why adding uh, this stuff. Can, can I see what changed in the in the commit panel? Because uh, uh, sure. might, it might have added some other stuff that I didn't notice. OK. So can we start from the app build Gradle file and see what changed there? Ooh, there's stuff that I we didn't know matching fallbacks. Uh, that should not be a problem. Is that the only change in the file? Looks like it. Okay. Um, why would that do this? Because this is just adding the plugin. Oh, wait. Uh, disagreeing about this. Oh, no. Android application and then yeah, but it might it be uh, that it's a this? different version, like the AGP version that is coming in uh, from uh, from the Tomol uh, might be not eight zero one, but something else. I don't know. Okay, so it didn't like if I took both of them. Out. No, that, that's take... that's fine. Leave them leave them out there. Leave them out there. Because then you're going to go back to the, oh, um, because I suspect that the problem is that the com Android test plugin uh, mm -hmm. is overriding the Android application plugin. That's the problem. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would take everything out of the root uh, build a Gradle file and move it as it is, like those two lines, just move, the, take them out and move them to the uh, to the benchmark Gradle file. Can I remove these lines then? Uh, just put them, no, 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 just leave those there. Uh, it should be fine. The problem is that, that now it will complain because it doesn't know which version uh, to use, which is fine. We can just add it. Uh, you don't need line four and five because they're the same mm -hmm. as before. Uh, and uh, you can take the apply false part out in the previous two lines. That should work. Okay. It's not complaining yet. <laughs> Things are happening. My computer is Yay, working really hard. It works. Okay. Back to the really excited part. This is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and Gradle, but whatever, Gradle. Uh, so let's see. Uh, enabled Boolean is deprecated. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, fine. Deprecated Gradle stuff. Um, okay. Oh, look at that. We got some benchmark stuff uh, here. So I'm going to run this um, just for the uh, for the stream here. I'm going to run this on an emulator. Please don't do that. Uh, I, I also have, have this device right here, uh, just in case we want to like actually uh, show some stuff. It's a random one of my random performance testing devices that sits on my desk. Uh, but let's do it on the emulator so we can all see what's going on. Um, so does this it, is gonna... Does it fold? Does it fold? I mean, once. I mean, if you, you bend it, it'll like... I mean, it, it, can, it can fold once. Yeah. I mean, then... yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should call them not foldables, but unfoldables. That is yeah. the key key feature they have. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, that's actually you know their, their marketing is already there. So I said, yeah, like a bloody genius. It's like new Google, you know, like old Samsung gun foldable. You know, it's it's everything that is basically built before you know this year. Anyway, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, this is this is cool. Um, and then I'll, I'll go take that um, that. Uh, that code to make it flicker every frame out after we do that. Um, I don't know if you can see the flickering. It's great. Yep. Beautiful. Uh, though I didn't run the uh, the demo. So let's go feed. Let's go take this out. Um, if true, sure. Uh, and then run the target application. 
and then it I'm looks run like the five. the benchmark only starts the activity and that then it's done exactly so yeah so well so i actually ran the um the application wait something's something's wrong so i hit run uh not supporting the current project what, what? i mean i have no idea <laughs> Uh, continue anyway. Will it do it? No. Darn it. Okay. What does that mean? Damn. Is it like not finding the stack ever? It ah. will help us. The package name is missing from the manifest. But I, I believe, I believe where we're heading with this. It is. It means the... not. <laughs> no, I mean, is it I, still I have no idea thing? what the queries thing is, but yeah, I've never seen it. I think it's the for the the um, if you want to list the uh, uh, installed apps, I guess. Well, there is a wrong twenty nine comma Q. What what uh, was it? Is that it was for profilable though. I don't know if it's is relevant. It? Where is this? Uh, in the it was like an error in the manifest oh, uh, line, line 16. sixteen. Is it? Is it okay? Can you just is that leave? A thing you're allowed to type. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, can you put twenty nine? Yeah, out of or... curiosity. It used to say. Q and then it says 29 comma Q. I don't know. That's Maybe weird. Studio put the 29 there because it's the target. Mm. No, it's not even the, the target API version. Uh, still broken. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea either. All right. So let's, uh, let's, let's press the elephant button. That's like the next place I go when, when Gradle yeah. starts getting weird. It might just be that uh, Gradle Sync hadn't picked that up, but it's still saying it's not hmm. okay. Can I run all tests and benchmark. Still the same. Module not specified. Can you, yeah, just select? I. Why all tests is not supported? As a... Cannot obtain the package. Which package? What package are you talking about? You know, I wonder if this is because remember I changed the package name to yeah. Let me just try. And then I'll change this. Yeah. Change the name of this. It's possible. Like my theory is that uh like they're missing like a like a replace needs, string somewhere in the it, template. It maybe it needs to match, I don't know. Yeah. There doesn't appear to be a test source set in that module. Uh, Kerry, I'm not sure that's important for benchmark though. As in, it's it's as far as I can see, it's marking the entire benchmark module in green. So it's probably fine. Uh, Sean, what did you put the the package name to in the benchmark build a Gradle KTS file? Uh, can you can you put com example jet snack instead of com example benchmark? Um, sure. Let's see if that and then elephant button. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I have another one in here? Uh, no, it's just to have every everything matching. Okay. And, and seeing if it makes any difference. Maybe it doesn't. It doesn't look like it does. Still complaining. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this module and start again and not yep. change anything. Clone, clone it, clone it again. <laughs> clone everything again. Uh, just delete. Yeah. Where's that at? 
uh, I would do it with the keyboard. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on this Mac keyboard. But... Re refactor, probably refactor yeah. and then delete. No, I don't no. think it's going to be there. It's probably no. just, just select it and press delete on the keyboard. Maybe let's try that. No? I'm putting all the modifiers. Uh, FN delete. Just go to the settings gradle file and remove <laughs> the line. Oh, that's a good idea. It's the same thing. <laughs> as far as Gradle is concerned, it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, you probably need to sync first, and then you can delete it. Open it in Finder. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right. There we go. Goodbye, benchmark module. All right. That was fun. It was it was nice. You did not was, serve us well. Was, <laughs> was it fun, though? <laughs> Okay, so uh, do we want to try that again without changing the name, and then for like two seconds? Yeah, let's right. let's give it another All shot. Right. Let's give it another shot. I think it's fair. It had so many. Let's touch as little as possible. I changed nothing, and I'm gonna hit uh, finish. I'm gonna add it, I guess. Cool. And then here we are. That's uh, gonna... you're gonna have to do the same. Uh, no, in the okay, root sure. builder gradle, yeah, remove those two, uh, move them to the benchmark module. All right. Uh, yeah, replacing those two and remove the apply false oh, right. stuff. Uh, Mark is asking, does the benchmark module uh, builder gradle or KTS have the correct target project path set? Uh, I don't know what that is. But it does have something, so it's probably it looks correct. That looks right to me. Um, Let's see. All right, so we got. Some Shall we? Stuff. Let's try to run it. Run, run. No. Ah! Damn. Edit. No. Uh, no idea what's going on. I don't know either. Let's pretend we run the benchmark. All right, so we ran that. <laughs> um, I actually have a backup. Watch, watch this. Watch this. Uh, Ooh, compose benchmarks. Damn, look at that! Wow, we wrote all these benchmarks. They're so cool. <laughs> that was smooth. That was smooth. I'm gonna edit with a like crossfade transition in the, in the on YouTube. <laughs> and I go to the sound effect. Perfect. Um, so I don't know what status I left this thing in because I was doing some stuff in here last, but let's see. Uh, oh, I was writing, I was writing, um, I was writing Kotlin bytecode investigations in this file, as you do. Uh, <laughs> let's just like, let's just look at the commits and maybe undo everything that doesn't need to be. Yeah. Uh, let's get rid of this. Yeah. Looks like I was doing stuff. All right, we can ignore those things. All right, so let's go to like trivial startup benchmark. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, basically this is instrumenting JetSnack and it's using macro benchmark. Uh, so it's a macro macro benchmark rule, uh, and so we can do startup compose here. Um, so we're gonna run this on an emulator, which we shouldn't do, but maybe macro benchmark will let me do that. But this way we can see what it's doing. This is my favorite part about performance is um, this is part right here when you get numbers, but usually it takes like three minutes. So I get a lot of coffee too. <laughs> That's the reason you like it because you get coffee. <laughs> I mean, why not? So um, what were, I, I got, Slightly distracted. I was trying to see if there was a bug report for the <laughs> macro benchmark stuff. Uh, turns out I'm either terrible at using uh, Bugganizer, which I probably am, or yeah. there isn't. So I'm going to have to file I one. I'm also terrible at, at using Bugganizer. So that's, uh, I think that's a universal trait. <laughs> All right. So we got some failed tests. That's Ooh. a surprise. Oh, it, it doesn't like my emulator. I'm sorry. 
Uh, so let's run it over on this Pixel 3 XL, which is the random performance testing device I had at my desk. Oh, unfoldable. It's it is not unfoldable. It it's single, it is foldable, but not unfoldable. <laughs> it, it, okay, fold. fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, there is something there. Sebastian. That is, is one hundred percent ending on the on the clickbaity thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, that's. What, I mean, marketing wise, there is something there. I I feel it. <laughs> oh oh, look at it. Yeah, it's doing stuff. Yeah. I don't know what it's doing actually. It's opening and closing things. Yeah. Very excitingly. Ooh. <laughs> this is this is the the best way to show pixels. You just you hold it up to a camera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which version of Studio are you using? Cannot you use the screen mirroring in the ID? I don't know. Probably. I've never. I've never... <laughs> I because I well because like the, so the the reality is because I work on Android X. I get a new Studio every like Monday or something. So I I stopped like using you know new features because like it, it's like if I if I configure it, it's gone next Monday. Um, so <laughs> I I can one up you on that. I, I run my own <laughs> studio <laughs> with my own bugs. <laughs> All right, so we got some results okay. here. Uh this looks great. Green. Um oh yeah, so we got a green test. So that means it passed. Uh so that's uh, that's how that's a bunch of marks work. Now uh so we got uh down here we get the the output from uh from um macro benchmark. Uh, what's actually, I think what I really like about these is, um, is this tiny, tiny window. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this window right here. It's a baby um, window. It's just born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh so as it as it runs the macro benchmark it uh it actually grabs um basically systrace um so let's see what's going on here do we get any data that's interesting on here maybe let's make it smaller ooh stuff <laughs> oh that's just that's just starting it looks like nothing is happening it does. It also kind of looks like when I was holding up the picture, like we were uh, we were just displaying a single piece of text. So I'm mm. suspicious. Uh, uh, we're not we're not doing anything uh, for some reason. Let's check. Uh, let's let me actually just check to see what else I changed in here. Maybe I did something. <laughs> totally readable. Right. What is this? That's just a new line. Cool. Uh... <laughs> Main activity. Uh... Ah, yes. Uh, the 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 part where I, I made it not do anything. That would be. <laughs> that would explain it. <laughs> that's that's really it right there. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was obviously testing something else and reusing the macro benchmark. Let's try this again. Uh, the test we'll works. Get... It tells you you're not doing anything. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. Uh, now it broke. I'm so much time work, dude. That info. What was it? Uh. You know what I can do. What? Yeah, probably the easiest thing is just roll back. Roll the back. Roll file. back. Roll. Roll back. Roll back. Roll <laughs> <Yes>. back. <laughs> roll back. This Thank is you. like row hide, but roll back. <laughs> it's like roll house, but with the roll back. It's like roll back. <laughs> Do you remember roll house? Do you remember? I actually remember more Peter Griffin talking about road house than the road house itself. The movie. <laughs> I don't think it's I've ever seen up. the movie, so. I think there was Patrick Swayze, I guess, right? It was like, it's an old movie. I mean, you're older than classic I am. at this point. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I turned, yeah, I turned 40 on, on Sunday, last Sunday. So I'm definitely old. Congratulations. I feel, I feel young. Thank you. I also, I also got the weirdest 
gifts from my wife. Like she bought me some fancy, cra crazy stuff just for me. I got a salt shotgun for her for flies. <laughs> Sorry, <Believe>. what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Oh, yeah. Here you go. This thing. Do like dehydrate so the you... flies? Is that the? No, 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 no. You you actually fill it with salt, like mm -hmm. kitchen salt, and then you 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 pump it, <laughs> and then and then the result of safety, <laughs> and the thing just just yeah. This is thing. This is my. Are, are you That's ever gonna hit it. anything with that? Isn't the fly just the as thing big is... as the salt? crystal you're shooting at it no that's the the the, the tiny one you know the the, the the sandy one so that's the thing you just the other thing is brutal it's like effective to up to like four feet it's 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 dangerous it's dangerous so yeah yes anyway um so so back back to what we're doing so i ran it again and i got the same results which reminded me we didn't um ever update the target with this new code so this is something uh, that I run into with macro benchmark uh, somewhat regularly. Uh, you have to run the target again every time you change the the target because uh, they're two separate applications. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna run the target and then we're going to uh, do it again. So much coffee, really. Just I can't imagine, I man. You, you're gonna be <laughs> by, by the end you're, of the day, you're gonna be like jittery. <laughs> I, I had to switch to decaf. Actually, it was uh, it, it, it was a problem. It's There's like performance work is dangerous, man. <laughs> Has serious physical conse consequences. All right. So the target is ah, this looks much, much, much better. That looks like uh, it's doing stuff now. Uh -huh. um, so now I'm going to run the startup compose for a trivial startup benchmark. Which doesn't do the whole jet snack thing. This is just going to do like a, a lazy list and scroll it. I think it doesn't even scroll it. It's trivial startup. It's just, <laughs> just, just, just like, lazy. No, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> oh no, it's not. It's not working. I'm going to switch to a different uh, benchmark. Was it too trivial? Yeah, it was way too trivial. <laughs> scroll benchmark. Yeah. Let's do this. Just in case. Yeah, let's 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 go back in time. Uh, da -da -da. What is Gradle doing down there? Oh, he's still it's running. He's still, still, still running the the, the the benchmark. It's, yeah, oh. it's just, just 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 all day, just like and they fade and they fade. Right, it just <laughs> well, it was like he stopped it. <laughs> Come on, it does. Um, so what I absolutely love about macro benchmark is when you stop it in studio, uh, when you run it from studio, it, it does stop the benchmark runner, uh, which is which is much nicer than some of the other uh, uh benchmarking tools, which you just then you just restart your phone at that point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it just lost the phone, so yeah, we had a good run just by another phone. Look at it, okay, it's doing things, Whee! it's doing scrolling stuff. <laughs> nice. He's doing the scrolly bit. <laughs> I don't understand. Is it? Oh no, no. Okay, okay. Is, is it flipped right? Because yeah, that's Skype thingy. Okay, okay, okay. Oh yeah, that is. I, I never held a phone up to a camera before, but yeah, I'm inverted apparently. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if we look at the like on OBS, you are the right way around. Uh, but then, oh, but like, oh. Yeah, so people can see you not in the screen share, but on the side you're the right size. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're still waiting for the first results. So time for some more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at some point you're gonna squeeze like a book or some Game of Thrones episodes or something, you know, like <laughs> just like a like a second team job, right? You're, you're on, I'm on this team, and when I'm building, I'm also on the other team. You know, there's a, 
uh, a YouTube channel I follow that has uh, yesterday or the other day released a uh, like two and a half hours documentary investigation into something, and it's like that would be Perfect. it. <laughs> like one minute at a time is gonna take you a month. <laughs> All right, so we have some okay. uh, some stuff here. All right, so stuff happened. Um, we can we can now look at it. Uh, so let's see what we got in here. And we're gonna look at it in here for a second, and then we'll look at Perfetto UI, I think, because that's how I use these. Okay. Stuff so happening. What are we looking doing... for? That's a good question. Um, I'm not seeing anything interesting. I think this is like some sort of like early startup. And then, ooh, there we go. Okay. Right ah, where the okay. CPU spikes. Stuff. Stuff. Happening. We're looking for yeah. stuff. Nice. Yeah. Colors. I was not seeing stuff. And 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 that's 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 what I want. Stuff. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's possible. Like you know, I it's sometimes when I like dig through here, like there might be something interesting going on here where we're doing something to cause the UI thread to like wait forever to actually draw the mm -hmm. first frame um, on some background thread or something. And there's like Something's being waited on, um, but that, that's probably not the case here. We're, we're interested in the stuff here. But if you're using a you know your real application and there's startup initializers and backgrounds happening, that's a, a real area to look at. Um, so we can see uh, in here we can see actually this is one of the really nice parts about this sampling method uh, is it's it's going to give me all of the threads um, that we see, um, and then we're going to see uh, what. Uh, basically, the render thread uh, was doing um, actually pushing uh, pushing frames out, uh, and we're also going to see what the um, the main thread is doing. So we're seeing these choreographer do frames, um, and then we're doing measure and layout, and then in here we're seeing some compose stuff happening. So we're definitely in the right area. Um, so I'm going to keep scrolling in. Uh, I'm going to switch over to uh, US so that I use WASD. To navigate around in here, uh, so that's this is actually like a really nice feature in both this UI and Perfetto. They sort WASD for navigation, um, so we can see the initial frame here. I think this might be the first frame. Uh, yeah, looks like it. Uh, so the initial frame here, we're doing. Uh, we're going to get a pretty good grasp of like what this application is actually doing in the first frame, and. This benchmark in particular has had like engineering time spent on it, so we're going to see it's going to be uh, reasonably uh, put together. Uh, so the measure and layouts happening here, and then we have recompose, and in there we can see some recompose happening. Uh, we can see some apply changes happening. Those are two different phases of the composition. Um, and we're going to see some more apply changes. Um, likely, this one was a lazy. Possibly, it's possible that this one was a lazy list um, doing a subcomposition. Um, and then I'm not sure exactly without checking more. Um, and then I see some text layout here. So what I'm seeing here is uh, this area right here is is kind of me measure and layout of the first frame. Um, here, oh, here's the lazy list here. Here's recompose and some apply changes. Um, and this one, which is a trace I added, um, which is useful for me for answering the question, is text laying out, uh, but I'll probably take out, um, uh, has apply changes. Um, and then we have the draw here. Um, so this is roughly what we can get from this thing. Uh, there's, if I have something that I'm interested in, like this one right here, I can take, I can zoom in on this measure and layout. I can put it in a flame chart. Um, and then I can see like where did where did it go? Um, what did we do? We did some recomposition. We did some init layout for the text, um, and then we did apply changes. Uh, recompose is basically the period where you run your composables. Um, this is when you focus on recomposition optimization. This is the area that you'll you'll get gains on. Uh, text layout. This is pretty much the floor. You're not going to get below that. I mean, you can see it's microseconds right there. Uh, and then uh, apply changes. Uh, if this is big, then that means uh, what you want to do is minimize the, well, simply like it means that there's just a lot of changes happening uh, to the mm -hmm. composition tree. So this is the, the result of this is the changes have to get applied. Um, uh, but typically, this is where composition performance uh, work goes. Um, doo -doo -doo. So let's go find... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Back over to Dvorak so I can type. 
where is this project? Um, it is in Compose Benchmarks. Uh, out. I'm just uh, trying to figure out where uh... ah, this looks good. All right, CD outputs, CD. All right. All right. So here's what I'm looking for right here is this. Um, uh, do, do, do. So XML. Yeah. The text test pixel yeah. tree ben micro benchmark XML. I thought it was UI. Um, I like, I like how we are all the same. Nobody remembers a URL. Like even if I'm paying you, <laughs> fuck We're that. Getting I'm old. just gonna search. We're I'm gonna old. just search the thing and click on the first link. That's it. I don't care. All right. Um, Macro benchmarks build outputs. Uh, the connected output. Which one do I want though? Trace. Perfect. Trace. trace. Right here. Nice. Um, okay, so this Ooh, is the, the same data, but uh, presented with everything, um, and uh, the viewer is actually faster. Uh, so there's some like trade-offs between these two views. Um, so I use this one sometimes, um, and I use the other one uh, a lot of the time. Uh, so the other one gives me these nice roll-up features. It gives me the flame charts that are really nice. Um, it uh, integrates in Studio, so it's easier to collect, um, and it gives me the allocation tracking. Um, so the allocation tracking is is really really nice when I have. Uh, when I have actual allocations to find, uh, but it's 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 really really nice when uh, when I'm doing uh, performance optimization for a single composable to find like what is that composable actually doing because it's this really accurate trace of of the actual execution, um, and then this gives me stuff like what was the CPU doing? Um, so like we have this first frame. Um, uh, which we are going to do over. Oh, yeah. Also, my favorite part about this one is someone on the team uses Dvorak. Uh, so the WASD <laughs> is uh, is still valid in Dvorak in the same position as it is in QWERTY uh, for whatever that actually is. <laughs> um, so we can see the on this, we can see like what's actually scheduled in each CPU, um, which is really uh, like a nice little trick um, because a lot of times when I look at like application startup, just a second. Mm -hmm. I have to move you to, can you still hear me? Yep. Cool. All right. Uh, a lot of times when you look at like application startup, uh, you're going to find out that there's other processes that are happening triggered by API calls you made over to basically JMS core or something like that, uh, that are contending with CPU cores during your application startup. Um, and so that's something that's that's really helpful to figure out. That's something I came up with like the emoji work um, is we found that when applications started up, they grab a background thread, they want to do uh, you know things on that background thread and then send it back to the UI thread. Um, and then simultaneously, uh, emoji compats trying to you know do stuff on a background thread to, to you know load a font or something like that. Um, and then like these things all end up in contention for the same CPU cores. Um, and so that that's something that's really, really helpful when you're looking at application startup. Um, doo -doo -doo. The target process here. So we can see that this is actually running pretty much uninterrupted on CPU 6, which is nice. Uh, 6 and 7 are probably faster based on how this is going. We can see that there's some stuff happening, Surface Flinger, uh, Macro Benchmark. Nothing too exciting there. Let's go down and see what we can find. Um, what are these? I don't know what that is. Um, down in the target frame. So we can see that here, and you can see, I think, I don't know if it's coming across in video, but like the, the responsiveness of the UI is much faster um, in this tool. Yeah. Um, we can see basically the exact same result here. Uh, so I don't have composition tracing turned on. So this recompose block just shows as uh, as a single, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of uh, kind of block. 
Uh, but already from this, I can see that like I'm having pretty good recompose and uh, measure behavior. Uh, there's there's opportunities to go optimize in this area. Um, this is this is a really nice tool for uh, exploring with uh, app startup performance and app scroll performance like this. Um, let's try to turn composition tracing on. We have to wrap in a few minutes, by the way, because oh, okay. it's it's getting a bit late. Cool. Yeah. Then let's let's uh, transition out because composition tracing is going to take us a while. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. Um, so, given we're not going to be able to see that, uh, what would we see when we turn on composition tracing, and what is the uh, like a, the big advantage that we get? Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, so composition tracing, basically, it, it causes the Compose uh, runtime to instrument the enter and exit of composable functions uh, so that it emits like a trace uh, that ends up in this trace file mm -hmm. here. Uh, so when you do the sampling, you'll end up with traces saying like entering, you know, basic text um, and exiting basic text. And so you'll end up with this nice, uh, similar to this design here, uh, visualization of what composables recompose. Uh, it's particularly useful for unexpected compositions, um, which is kind of this thing where I, I thought something was going to compose once, but actually I see it's composing three times or, or something like that. Um, and that's, and it's all happening, you know, before the user's really interacting or something like that. Got it. Um, anything you want to say before we close it down? Anything particular that we haven't covered yet that you want to at least mention? Uh, yeah, no, that's <laughs> really, I just wanted to talk about performance. And so we've, and <laughs> I tricked you. I was like, Hey, let's talk about tech. And then we didn't talk about text the whole time. Uh, I mean, you have, you're going to have to come back because this was effectively <laughs> a performance that's episode. <laughs> that's unfortunate, right? We oh, need no. to do another episode with you. <laughs> oh no. Cause uh, I, I know that you've done uh, a lot of work with text performance in compose, uh, specifically, uh, like putting back some uh, optimizations for hot paths and common use cases that were there in views, but obviously weren't done in uh, in Compose. So maybe if you want to come back, then we can talk about those things and like how you go and find them, how you go investigate them, uh, what were you know interesting findings uh, you figured out, or the biggest hacks in the view. Uh, framework that you that you found were actually, you know, making a difference. Although you wouldn't have written that code, I'm sure there is something like that in there. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, I think the the parting thoughts I'd have is like uh, when it comes to performance in general, and this came up like uh, pretty consistently when we were looking at the composed tech stack. Is there's uh, these three three rules that Chuck kind of uh, taught me uh, that are really good. Uh, it's a good framework for. Uh, I have some code and I would like to figure out how to make it faster. Um, and there's like basically three things I can do to that code. Uh, I can I can make it not do stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. That that is fantastic. If I can make it not do stuff, uh, then then I've I've done I've done my job. Uh, and so that was actually a lot of what we did in the text composable was go find stuff that was for the general case and then just uh, re rewrite the code so the general case was just if condition uh, to only apply when it mattered. Um, like a, a big thing there is we had this thing called multi-paragraph, uh, which mm -hmm. is, as you might have guessed, multiple paragraphs. Uh, and, and the reality is, is almost every single allocation for a real text is a single paragraph. Um, so that was just pure overhead. So we just, we dropped that from an entire stack of, on the tech stack. Um, the, the other opportunity, which we, we started trying to do with that, uh, and, and, and I think unsuccessfully, if we profile that, I doubt we got a win uh, with, the, with that chip there, uh, is, to, uh, is to do it later. Um, so this is one that's like, it's, it's risky, but it, it turns out to be really useful when uh, you, you can actually make something like cost about the same to initialize um, and then just move the initialization to happen when it's actually necessary. Mm -hmm. um, that's how that this one typically uh, typically ends up winning. Uh, and then the, the hard one uh, is to make it faster. Um, and and that, that's that's just really hard to do. Um, so that's that's the thing that uh, typically I tried to avoid doing uh, because that involves uh, you know swapping out data structures uh, and doing clever things by looking at like column bytecode and whatnot. 
Um, and it's uh, it's just it's typically much much harder than just rewriting the code so that stuff doesn't happen. Um, so that that was typically the uh, the bigger wins that were available there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at some point when you want to optimize things, you need to start not even just looking at the bytecode, but even knowing what the bytecode does in and how expensive the operations in the bytecode are. And it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would even say it's also like getting down to that level was not typically the most productive yeah area in the text optimization um just because it's just it, it takes like half an, a half a day to like fully understand like you know some the, the full implications of of bytecode modifications anyway sean this was super cool and interesting i mean i'm also passionate about performance but i don't get to do as much performance work as i as i used to uh so i'm very happy that we have an opportunity to cover that as well I mean, it's not text, but <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for not finding text. In the no, it's okay. It's okay. But it's also, okay. also, I'm I'm happy we didn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Are you trying to hide something? <laughs> uh, so before we go, Ivan, do you want to do a quick wrap up, and then we can? Yes. Just very quickly, thank you for being with us. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, remember to subscribe and like the stream. If you want to support us, you can buy the T-shirts, you can buy the, the keychain. We also have uh, metal pins. Uh, it was here, I swear to God. You it have here. it on your T-shirt? Uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I have it here. I have it here. So now... So it's one of those the, days. Man, <laughs> man I mean... the. the I have a toddler, okay? So this is like the free out of jail card. And a salt that shotgun. I'm sleeping. <laughs> well, but they are not related. But luckily, Hopefully luckily not. not. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, no, Mark, sorry. I'm going to make sure that everything is fine in the VOD. Don't worry. So uh, if you want to join the post-episode chat, remember that you can access it with the Bruschetta tier on our coffee page. You can become one of our subscribers. If you want to subscribe for free to our channel, just connect your Amazon Prime video to your Amazon gaming account and your Twitch account, and Uncle Bezos is uh, sponsoring us every month for free. Sean, thank you for being with us. It was very, very, very real. It was a, a nice real episode where like, I have no idea this stuff. Oh yeah, this is cool. Oh yeah, it works. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> so this is, this is the stuff that I love. So thank you. All right. Thanks for having me. This is super fun. I, I love that my camera just freaked out now. It's very <laughs> weird. Just on the stream, not the Skype one, but it's no. a it's sign. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank you for being with us. See you next week. See you bye next bye. Week.